Let's talk some <laughs> NHL as we bring in Sean Simpson from TSN Ottawa. He'll have some thoughts on this and others. Look at this, smiling like a butcher's dog today. How you doing, Simmer? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, beautiful, stinky, hot day here in Ottawa. Um, went for right from whatever spring was to, to summer and uh, actually beautiful outside. Simmer, I got to ask you this. I just looked up Sean Simpson, hockey DB. Do you know how many hockey yeah. players named Sean Simpson there are? I, I'm sure you're aware of this, right? Uh, I'm not aware of how many. I'm aware of one growing up was Sean Simpson who played for the Auto 67s, was on a line with Jimmy Fox and Yvonne Jolly. I think went to the World Junior with the Regina Pats back in the day and got his autograph when I think I was seven. And when I was over playing in the World Junior in 1987, the punch up in Piastani actually came up to me in a practice. We were having a training camp in Switzerland and asked me if I was the same person that gave him the autograph at the time. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> There's like seven, eight, or nine Sean Simpsons as I'm looking up your yeah, your, yeah. your hockey career here, brother. Would you mind telling our viewers, by the way, just about your junior and NHL history before we get into what might come down with Gary Bettman today? Uh, actually played in Sault Ste. Marie, a little bit in Oshawa. Uh, played in the World Junior in 87, drafted by the Washington Capitals, a little time in the American Hockey League, and then, uh, funny, went into a little broadcasting, both color and uh, uh, on radio and TV with the Capitals, uh, and then into their front office, worked for the Caps, the Leafs, uh, a little time in the KHL, Dynamo Minsk, and back to Ottawa, and been working in radio ever since. Right, and life is great. So do you think you're going to be having some substantial hockey to talk about here this summer? What, what do you think is going to come down this afternoon? Well, I think there'll be substantial hockey. I mean, I think the National Hockey is going to go back to play. As it pertains to Ottawa, so much of the focus is the two picks, They've got their first rounder. They've got San Jose's. What does the draft lottery end up looking like? They've also got the first round pick of the New York Islanders. So to be honest with you, uh, selfishly, that's our focus. Um, to the NHL, I think they'll have the 2014 playoff. I think they'll have the play-in. I think they'll have a regular whatever it is. Uh, and I'm, I'm interested in that, but I'm, I guess I'm probably just a little bit hesitant, Rod, in that sense of how do they really pull that off. But when it comes to auto right now, it's really about the excitement of a young team, the team in Belleville, uh, the picks they have, and probably the future. So I think we'll have a draft lottery. I think we'll have a draft. I think we'll have a season, and hopefully a Stanley Cup will be handed out. Uh, but that should be very interesting. That is so interesting that you that you say that, and it makes total sense. If you're not one of the 24 teams, you have checked out, pulled the chute, yeah. and you're looking to the future. That is such a Canadian yeah. hockey thing. Well, it's not just a Canadian hockey thing. You know what? Hey, do people get excited about the Stanley Cup playoffs? For sure. Am I a hockey fan? Will I watch? For sure. In the United States and even in Canada, it's still a regional sport. And again, when I really look at this from an Ottawa side, yeah, no, it very much is about the future. But I don't think that's any different than another year. But what would it be like if you're not an Ottawa fan? And I love the Caps. I like watching the Leafs. There's a lot of teams I really enjoy. What will it be like if you're not necessarily a primary fan watching those teams in a playoff, um, you know, in an empty building? And the other part, I'll make this very clear. I mean, flat out, do players want to win the Stanley Cup any year? For sure they do. How many players deep down want to go through the long grind of being sequestered in a hotel for two months? Or are there players on those seven teams that won't have to come back? They're saying, you know what? Kind of thankful. Got my paycheck, and I'm really not that interested in playing this year. Well, of course, I would, of course, it's going to be those guys. There's no doubt. And I'm actually reading yeah. it this morning. NFL players are saying, can't imagine playing in empty stadiums. NCAA athletes yeah. are saying the same yeah. thing. And, and Darren, you've got a point on it. But, but, but my thinking is, yeah, it's not going to be great. But Simmer, you played. You know when you get out there on the ice, you're not going to be even thinking about that. You know that. Oh, no, 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 come on, come on. You don't I don't think you are. That. That, that's not, you, you, you have some of the best fans in sports in the CFL watching the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. You're telling me a game there at that beautiful stadium is ever going to be anything close to the same? There's not an athlete on the planet that plays a controlled scrimmage or plays rookie games back in the day when there's nobody there. It's not the same. Now, when you get down to maybe the final eight, final four, final two, I will say this, and this is where I think the NHL should be creative. It's like the NBA. The NBA, whatever they're doing down in Disney, I think might get creative with courts and kind of backdrops. You would be smarter to play this in a smaller venue, smarter to use some things to make it feel different. If you're going into 18,000 seat stadiums that are empty, to ever think when the puck drops it's going to be the same, not a chance. There's no way. Now, are you going to be competitive when the puck drops? Sure. 
but it's not the same thing. It's not the energy of the crowd when you score, you're down, you're up. Home crowd versus uh, is away. And, and, hey, athletes adapt, but there's no way it'll be the same thing. Well, I, you know what? Now that you say that, we're talking about two different things. You're not going to have the spine tingling okay, okay. standing on your on the blue line for the anthem, yeah. you know, that. Yeah. But if you're looking around in the crowd when the game kicks off, whack, you're dead. That's yeah. that's my point. There's a yeah, difference between yeah. the two, don't you think? Oh, no, no, for sure. And you know what? There's also athletes. God, I, I was a goaltender, and I was a nervous wreck when I played. There's probably a lot of athletes that might actually enjoy it, that might excel with the simple fact that playing in front of a crowd, it's not the same energy. You know, but as I said, it, it's a little different. Now, are you going to be alert in a contact sport? For sure. But I still think there's going to be a little time. And I almost look at this where they're planning it. If you have a play-in, if you're playing down to basically the final eight, you're talking about 23 of your 31 teams will probably be home by, what, three weeks? Well, seven of them will never appear. I think when you get down to the final eight this year, then it's kind of like, you know what? Lights at the end of the tunnel. It's game on. I'm not sure in that first round how that'll end up being. Yeah, Sean, as I'm listening to this, I'm, I'm thinking a couple things the same way. One, yeah, when you're sitting on the bench or you're on the blue line for the and there's no fans in there, it'd be kind of like a rec hockey game or an adult safe game where you kind of do whatever, whatever. Yeah. And it takes a couple of shifts to really get into it. Um, the other yeah. thing, the small building, I think that's awesome. Play in the hundred year old, you know, curved barn where there's no f- room for fans. Yeah. I think that would be cool. But the point I wanted to make was, yeah. yeah, as a player, and this is the year you finally win the cup. What's that like? You know, raising yeah. the cup, doing that with nobody in the building. Yeah, no, it'll be funny. We had Elaine Vino on this morning. We started joking because we were asking about, you know, would you have families and friends? And he talked about Team Canada. And then I thought, well, maybe they have family and friends. Maybe it's like minor hockey. I said, minus the cowbell. I mean, you can't be having that. Um, Here's what I'd rather say, though. If I went the two-month grind and I lost the Stanley Cup final, <laughs> how much does it suck standing there <laughs> with nobody around? If I win the Cup, I'm superimposing pictures. I'm doing whatever I have to do. I can Photoshop. fill in crowd. I'm having my party in the summertime. I'm getting my ring. I couldn't care less. But if I go <laughs> the final yeah. distance, That's... imagine the Boston Bruins last year. Losing the seventh game of the Stanley Cup final whatever building you're in and just being like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> just gave up two months. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> so, right. so I had that yeah. idea earlier when, when this kind of came about, yeah. could you not sell like a super pass to fans to be a part of this? So if, if a guy wanted to take two months off of work, spend like 15 grand or like 10 yeah, grand right. and you have the same 15,000 people in the building every single game. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, and again, as far as protocol, you go probably family first. Um, do you want to be quarantined? Do you want to foot the bill, I guess, at the hotel? But, hey, anything's possible. Um, yeah. I think the real question is the testing itself, right? Like, how reliable is that? Then realistically, and we had a little joke about kind of Trojan horses, uh, are <laughs> male athletes for yeah. two months, are they were disciplined enough to not have any visitors? I mean, now your said friend that paid 15 grand, is he going to go solo in his hotel for two months? So th- th- there's lots of things to try to kind of overcome. I hope we get to the point with the testing where the players feel comfortable, uh, whatever fans. But, boy, this is going to be different. And I would think the NHL, like I said, I, I would be so creative of, you know, imagine the great rink in Regina. I mean, Saskatoon, some of these places. And I know they're not going there, but how cool would venues like that be to kind of do some fun things with, as I said, versus these mega buildings that no matter when you're in them, when you go there for, have you guys been to morning skate in the national hockey league? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Like think about that, Rod. Like, you know, honestly, it's it. Hey, you know, that's hard. You know what I mean? These are massive, massive buildings. And even if you did something on TV, which I think for the viewer would be cool for the players at the end of the day. And then the other part, do you imagine the chirping? Do you, do you imagine what you you're going to have to do from a television standpoint? And I think right. you're going to have to go on cable, you know, on, on Sirius XM because the amount of chatter and stuff, which could be fun for the fans. No kidding. Hey, Simmer, just lastly, because you're in Ottawa. It's one of my favorite cities, and it's a wonderful yeah. CFL town, and you guys are the right holder of the Red Blacks. Yeah. Has there been any talk of federal yeah. aid to the CFL? Do you have a take on that and if American players should be subject to government assistance? <sighs> My take personally, and I was a Canadian that worked in the U.S. for 20 years, you know what, if these guys have been here and they paid into the system, never treat them as foreigners, you know what, they should be treated the same as all Canadians. If you've never been here, that's something different. 
Uh, I sure hope we get back. I sure hope our good friend AJ Jackabek gets back calling games. The problem I had, Rod, and I was trying to get my head around, I could never really understand the books of the CFL uh, in relation to the money that TSN gives to player costs and then what their operating budgets were. I worked in an NHL front office for a number of years. I, f I really had a hard time getting my head around on where these costs came from. Do I want support for the CFL? Absolutely. Is it a Canadian tradition? No doubt. But when those initial numbers came out, I, I don't think that was great for the league. But I think these players and thinking about young families, thinking about we had Brad Sinopoli on, uh, Nigel Romick, I know has a, a young family, Mr. Arbuckle and his family just came here. Do they do, deserve support like every other Canadian? Absolutely they do. Uh, but as far as the teams themselves, I, I think you'd have to dive a little deeper into the books, to be quite honest with you. Uh, it's another planet as far as their financials go. But next time in Ottawa, I'll take you to Kraft for lunch and we'll go over it all. It might take that long. Okay. Uh, Simber, okay, uh, thanks very much. All, all the best with the news this afternoon. And I appreciate the time. This has been fun. Okay. Any good time, guys. Cheers. Sean Simpson, TSN 1200 Ottawa, joining us. It really looks like he's in the first-class airline seat. Did he not? Yeah. I had to think about that for a second, <laughs> where he was. That's cool. Um, yeah, that is the uh, breaking news. Gary Bettman today at 2.30, make South time, that's Mountain, uh, to make an announcement on the NHL's return to play. I haven't seen any of the tweets. This is just what I'm getting text from our listeners and viewers. Uh, I assume that's what it is. Has he said? Has he said? This is I, what I'm announcing? No, I don't think so. I haven't seen it anyway, so we'll see what he's going to do. We're all going to be hanging on every word. And apparently it's an exclusive interview on Tim and Sid. That's a pretty big deal. Oh, yeah. For Tim and Sid. When you get the commissioner to go on, it's a pretty big deal. Yes. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.